Hey guys, tonight we're going to talk about insert into versus select into. <clears throat> now, it seems like an easy topic, and it really kind of is, but I'm amazed at how many people don't know this. So I thought I'd make a video on it just to kind of clear things up. I'm sure every one of you are just waiting with bated breath, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> in, at, at, at the top level, uh, the, the big difference between insert into and select into is... Uh, with insert into the table has to already exist and with select into it's going to create the table or I'm going to say I'm, I'm not necessarily going to say it's going to create the table but it has to create the table so the table can specifically has to specifically not exist right so let's take a simple example here where I say uh, so like actually maybe I should there we go select star into uh, let's just use a temp table table from we'll say just take it from sys processes right it doesn't really matter what we do so this is the syntax for that right uh, select star into the name of the table you want to create from sys processes there we go and I got 32 values now if I try to run that again I'll get an error because it already exists so select into has to create the object and insert into cannot create the object oh I love this uh, yeah, there we go. So, <clears throat> um, that's going to be the big difference. Uh, uh, another difference is that uh, an insert is uh, fully logged, and a select into is what we call minimally logged, which means it's only going to log the page allocations. Okay. So, the implications of that are in like large loads, right? You'll see this quite often when you have like a data warehousing scenario where uh, you need to load just hundreds of millions of rows um, into a table and uh, rather than put up with the logging for all of that and and taking a lot longer what they'll tend to do is they'll tend to uh, drop the table and then do the the or the normal insert they would do they'll do as a select into <clears throat> and then get the non-logged operation, what we call the non-logged, right? But it's really minimally logged. But they'll get the non-logged operation of that and save themselves all of that logging overhead. And the operation happens tons faster, right? What we call gazillion D faster. Um, <clears throat> and that's fine, but there's a, there are a couple drawbacks to that method. Uh, the first drawback is that it changes the object ID. <clears throat> so if you're doing a bunch of uh, profiling <clears throat> based on uh, uh, if you're doing a bunch of profiling say on uh, blocks or deadlocks or whatnot right you can lose that object ID that you're tracking with or if you're if you're uh, um, doing some other kind of logging based off of object ID you can you're gonna lose that object ID so uh, you're not gonna know what object say your customers table is what I, you know is from from day to day to day because the ID keeps moving <clears throat> so that's definitely something to keep in mind when when you're doing something like that right is are your DBAs doing anything that relies on the object ID and the other thing that's really gonna that, that's really gonna hinder that effort is if you need that table to go into a specific file group because with select into you can't choose a specific file group so you know you're pretty much dead in the water if you need to put it somewhere other than default right uh, you can choose a schema, but unfortunately you can't tie a schema to a file group. So, you know, you're still dead in the water, right? <clears throat> so if you if you absolutely need to, to put it in a different file group, then you have no choice but to go with uh, insert into. Now the good news on that is that in SQL 08, they've given us a way to make those insert regular insert operations minimally logged as well. I'm not going to get into that here, but just, <clears throat> uh, but you can look that up in BOL under uh, minimally logged inserts, I believe. Uh, it's not hard to find, and there's some criteria you need to meet, um, but, you know, still, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it's it's a really good, uh, it's, a, it's a really good, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, compromise. It's a really good compromise. So, anyway. Um, so that's that. Uh, those are your two really big differences. 
Um, when would you choose to do one over the other? Well, you know, if the table already exists, like I said, and you don't, and, and there's no need to drop it or you can't drop it, then definitely you, you need to do a, an insert into. And if you're doing a lot of data, then of course look into the, into the minimally logged. There's, uh, uh, there are, you know, like I said, there's some, over, there's some, some considerations you need to take into that. Um, but if the table doesn't exist, so usually when, when people are using insert into's, I mean select into's, it's usually because here somehow I have managed to set the debug on this. Uh, stop debugging. Somehow I've managed to hit a debug. Um, but when uh, when people used to use select into, it's usually in uh, stored procedures or something when uh, when they can't get around it. So uh, or or when they don't feel like creating the table ahead of time. So let's say you wanted to uh, put sys processes into an intermediate table. Well, sys processes is actually pretty wide, right? So you don't want to sit there and and try to figure out what all the data types are, and and sit there and create this really long create table statement all the way down here, and then do a, an insert into, <coughs> especially when all you want is a really fast uh, intermediate result, uh, you know, temp table. You know, sys processes can have thousands and thousands and thousands of rows in it. So again, you're going to incur that that logging overhead. So why not use a select into and just get it over with? It's going to be a lot faster, and you don't have to manage all of the overhead of what the DDL is going to look like, right? But there are times like that when you when you absolutely can't get around uh, creating that DDL on your own and and using an insert instead. So let's say that you were going to do something like you wanted to put the the uh, the results into a temp table from say SP lock or something like that right then you would have to define a temp table uh, so you'd have to say create table and I'll just use this one again I'm not gonna code this example out completely um, so you'd put all of your DDL in there right and then you would say insert table yeah I right, see so look at that and it's already given me Oh yeah, but it's because it's it gave me the DDL of the uh, uh, of what already existed in here from sys processes. So that's excellent. So here, um, you can see all, and I'll just cut all this stuff out here. There we go. So you can see it'll greatly increase the length of your of your effort, right? So I'm going to go ahead and kill all of this because screen real estate and all during a video, right? So I'll just kill all of this. There we go. Okay, so I've got all my DDL in there, and you just saw that. So, uh, but what I'm going to say is, well, it's going to do that to me again, isn't it? Here, let me turn off IntelliSense. There we go. Insert table. Oh, it did it again. Table one. How's that? <laughs> so we'll just get away from that. I th I'll call this table one. There we go. Okay. And then you would say something like exec uh, something like that, right? So now you can you can insert from an execute statement, uh, but you can't uh, do that with a select into. So you couldn't say something like uh, select. You couldn't say something like that. Uh, XP lock uh, into. So you couldn't do something like that, right? Um, so if you need to do it from from the results of an SP, then you need to go ahead and create the the table ahead of time, and then just do an insert. If it's going to be a lot of data, well, then just make sure that you uh, do the minimally logged insert that we talked about before. Now, one of the other times that I see people using uh, that I see people using insert is when they need to create an identity column, uh, and that's actually incorrect. Uh, you know, most people think that you can't create an identity column in a select into, and you absolutely can. Um, this is one of the things that I hear again and again and again when I ask 
you know, when I'm interviewing DBAs and I ask them what the difference between uh, select into and insert into is, um, you know, they, they always tell me, well, you know, if I need to create an identity column, then I have to create the table ahead of time. No, you really don't. Let, let me walk you through that real quick. Let me see if I can remember that syntax. So it'll be select identity row num star. Oops. Into table from sys processes. There we go. And now if I say There we go, and now you can see that I have a row number in front of each one of them. So let me talk about this function here real quick. This identity function is only available in the select into statement. And of course, it's pretty easy to read, right? You tell it what data type you want it to return, and then you give it the seed and increment values, and then give it a column name, and you're golden, right? So it's really that easy. <coughs> so even for uh, putting identities in in result sets, you don't have to have uh, you don't have to have uh, an insert statement. So you know they're both extremely useful. They've both kind of got their ups, their pluses and minuses, right? Uh, select into uh, you select into has to have the has to create the table, and you can't put it in a file group. Um, you know, insert into the table already exists, and you can have it in any file group you want. But you've got the overhead of all that logging, and for you know some small to mid-size operations, that's not really going to matter. But when you're in large warehousing scenarios, that logging can be the difference of you know a couple hours, really, in in many cases. So you know it, it can really matter. And I've been in shops where there was no way around it. We had to drop the objects every single night and recreate them and, and with a select into because there was just so much data there and there wasn't any, any discernible way to do incremental uploads, uh, I mean incremental inserts, that you know, we had to just drop the tables and, and, re, and reload them with 600 million rows every single day. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to do stuff like that. It's it's a poorly architected system, I'll I'll admit. But you know, whatever it is, we're there, right? So anyway, uh, that's the uh, insert into versus select into argument. There may be something I forgot, but you know, if you can answer the question this thoroughly in any interview, then uh, you'll pass. Take care.